Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong and welcome to the Back Office Teardown Lab. Today we are working on a telly box. And uh, it's this telly box. And you will see from the footage that the screen is doing some random shapes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dismantle it and see if we could figure out what's going wrong with it. So this was quite an old unit. It's been around ages in the household. And interesting enough, it's 12 volts DC. So that kind of makes it handy if you wanted to, uh, I guess, use it in a caravan or something. And it's got an integrated DVD player of all things, as relevant as they are these days. But the problem is it started to do that crazy colors. And in my experience, normally when you get a television that does that crazy coloration, it's normally always the LDVS cable just works way loose. So nothing too strenuous if you can get to it. So hopefully it's not gonna to be too problematic to get to it in this one. And if anything, we might learn a little bit about the internals of this telly because sometimes I am inclined to try to fit uh, Raspberry Pis and whatnot into devices. Now some of these screws are a bit awkward. Doesn't, I hate that. I hate it, man. So I'm going to need to use a, a slightly pointier screwdriver. And if you've got, get them. Sometimes you get a screwdriver with really long shafts. Those are amazing if you can find them. In this case, I, I'd like one with a long shaft, but thin shaft. So maybe there are a few out there which might have a slightly thinner shaft. Are there any lathe owners watching? I'd be really curious to see if you could get a regular screwdriver like that and lathe the center portion a bit thinner just to give you that access where none was previously available. So I've done um, something I don't normally do and I've laid out a towel. Do you like that? A bit of a, a rag towel. When I was doing my screen printing experiments, I uh, kind of had towels and stuff lying around to try things on. And this was one of them. And it, uh, it kind of works quite well on a towel, I have to say. So now I've got a back office towel for preserving the finish on those soft items. So while I'm doing this, I'll read off some of the features of this telly. Apparently it has a VGA input and PC audio, so that's quite cute. Of course, you don't have, um, when you've got VGA, of course, there's no sound, so you need an additional sound wire, that's what that's for. It could be useful for hooking up as a to a radio or something, you know, if you need something that has needs an external speaker. It has SCART always handy. Video, so it's got composite video and it's got a YPBPR and I keep forgetting what is YPB, is that just basically component video. It has a uh, coax for something, <laughs> no idea what that's for. Followed by a USB, a 75 ohm antenna for digital TV, HDMI, a CI, conditional access module and earphones. So I mean, it's quite cute really for something. I think it was probably like 50 pounds or something. It wasn't like amazingly expensive. I definitely remember that. And of course the DVD player here on the side. So I think that's all the screws. I'm just having a little feel around in case there's any seat. Oh, there's one more. Oh, oh no, <laughs> there's one more. And then you found another one. So I'm hoping I don't have to take the stand off. You never know. I think that's all of them. Nothing. So I'm just going to put my nails in there. Actually, if it's anything like monitors that I've had before, sometimes it just comes off from the front. Yeah, there you go. So it's just the bezel. Remove the bezel. Oop. And we have just on the off camera here, there's actually a wire hooked to the uh, front here. Is there an edge connector we can remove? Mm, nope. So I'm just going to unscrew that. So it would be nice to get this going. It's always something something for the kids' room, isn't it? You don't want to give them anything too good because you know they're going to trash it. But at the same time, you don't want anything that's going to cause their brain to warp because the picture's so crazy. So let's see if we can... Oh, more screws! I remember in the olden days when people would have quite expensive 
flat panel tellies because they were all new then and you'd have a lot of Sonys and stuff and it was pretty un it was pretty common for drivers to go in the telly and it was by and large reasonably economic to repair them because you could get like a module you know like an LCD in fluorescent inverter module and it was maybe quite expensive maybe it was 50 quid or something but the tellies themselves were really expensive so that, that's fine whereas now you'd just bin the whole lot wouldn't you wouldn't want to pay somebody to do this job right okay so oh this is awesome by the way this is so cool so you can see in there you've got the DVD drive on the right, you've got the TV control circuitry on the left, and then there's just basically one LDVS wire which we're gonna try to snag. As soon as I can just get it off this LCD inverter module for the backlight. So this little thin wire is just the wire for the backlight, just hooked to this separate module altogether. So that's kind of handy. It's kind of it's in separates too. Now the bit that I was concerned with, and the bit where I would focus on of course, is this connector that you get here and I'm just going to give it a pull unfortunately it looks in good <laughs> kind of you're kind of half hoping it's looking going to look bad but um, I'll probably apply power now actually just fiddle with it before going any further because that might have actually been enough to fix it but while we're in here oh there's a disc even in here look there is actually a movie it's amazing just to see that just totally exposed mechanism. I just assumed it was going to be something a bit fancier. But let's just plug it in. I'll plug the backlight back in. And that whole backlight module looks like a standard one. This is just a TV that's just made out of parts. What I mean by that is when you uh, get stuff from uh, the Far East, that's it's literally made out of all of the bits you can get on Alibaba or something to build your own telly. So these are these are companies that are making these in relatively small batches, probably from parts that are just reclaimed or left over from other companies' orders or processes. No different than those cheap Android tablets you get. Let's turn that on. Where the uh, where all the parts of the, the tablet are basically just glued in, hot glued. Now the moment of truth. So it's got a, a DVD in it, which is kind of handy for testing. So right, so we've powered it on. We've got a little green LED here in the bottom left. Hmm. So far, nothing. A few scratches there. I've got a severely scratched screen elsewhere, and it would be interesting to do a video one day on seeing how we can fix that. Right, DVD. Let's change the input mode. DV, no, oh, not DTV, no, 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 no. DVD. Come on. It's looking all right, actually, though, to be honest with you. I'm not seeing any uh, color, color things. But what I'll try to do is disturb that connector. So once it's we, we've confirmed it's doing what it should, let's disturb the connector and then see if we can make it mess up. And if that is the case, when I push the connector home, I'll probably put a bit of glue on it. Maybe a bit of hot snot. I like how the resolution of the DVD is obviously less than that of the uh, panel. Okay. So far, so good really, isn't it? That's not bad at all. We just, have we fixed that? looks like we have. So I'm going to bend this over and I'm going to be a bit gentle really because I don't want... Oh, <laughs> let's put that on mute. Because what I'm going to do is uh, now, I don't want to touch that high voltage thing for the, the um, backlight, but ouch. Ah, did you see that? That's that there, that picture that we had briefly where it was sort of messed up. That was definitely, ah, hang on, there we go, we can do it again. Oh, you can see it happening, can't you? Hmm. So it wasn't the connector. Ah, there we go, did it again. It's... 
definitely occurring. So I'm going to let this leave this for a moment, see if it settles down, and then see if I can put my finger on what is making that appear. Hmm, haven't managed to quite make it do it again, but I think I know what it was, and I'm going to show you because I think there's a fix for it if it does happen. So it is running, so I'm going to be a bit careful. You can hear the see the whole live DVD mechanism whirring away in front of me. And that is to do with this portion here. So let me, let me stop that. Be quiet. Ah, oh, silence is golden. Right, so you can see the ribbon. That's the LDVS connector. That's the one that we sort of fiddled around with right there. And that's connected to this PCB. And that PCB runs the whole matrix of the screen. However, it's folded over. It's a sort of soft, uh, like flexible connection, and it's going to this big PCB here. And these are where it joins that. And that's the whole picture, right? That's the picture matrix. So you can see that if this PCB material comes off, this ribbon material comes off this PCB, you're going to get an issue in the picture. And that's why this is all kind of stuck down. And then that's the very sort of sensitive connector that you want to make sure is nicely pushed home. And that's really where you normally get most issues. So give it a little wiggle, give it a push, make sure that's pushed home. Now, if you run this and you discover it's not working out for you for whatever reason, and if you touch this, the picture's getting sorted. I'm just having a look on my shelf above. There is something you can use. Yes, and I do have some to show you. And that's something like this sort of foamy tape. So if you can apply, if you've got the issue, try to apply some of the thicker foam tape across that edge. In fact, should we just, we'll pretend, we pretend it was not working for us and we've got some of this. And just cut off a section of that. And this is really useful tape, by the way, for all, all matter of things. And what you do, if you can find it, it's always a bit tricky, is there's a, a plastic that you can remove and there's underneath it, oh, I got it. First time in a lifetime I actually managed to get it. You can just apply that and stick that straight down like I'm doing here. And hopefully that's going to push on something within the enclosure. If you've if you haven't got anything in the enclosure for a while, you could put a few layers, I suppose, or you could, you know, apply something else that's going to take out this compliance, and that's going to push it down and make that a little bit tighter for you, and then that's going to do a better job. And while you're here, if it's all working, get a bit of um, hot glue, and just put a blob of hot glue on that connector so that connector can't work its way. If you don't have hot glue, try a bit of uh, maybe duct tape. Duct tape will cure what ails you. Get that in there. I just hope, is this conductive tape? Make sure it's a non-conductive variety. <laughs> and you can pop that in like that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna power this thing back up because I wanna make sure now, when I'm gonna screw everything back together, it's not gonna uh, go kaput. And if you have the opportunity to have it running whilst you're trying to put everything back, it's fantastic. But just look at that, by the way, look at that gorgeous discrete components. This is so hackable. So uh, in answer to my earlier sort of suggestion that if you might want to put a uh, Raspberry Pi into the screen itself, like, like I've done on a few of my videos, definitely this is the sort of top, uh, screen you can do it. I'm just gonna, just before we sign off, should we put in a few screws? Let's see if it has, it is working okay. Don't worry though, I'm not going to make you watch me put this whole thing back together. Let's just see how it goes. And you can normally resurrect these from the grave. Somebody gave me a great monitor the other day and it's uh, a digital monitor. There's no digital tuner, it's only an analog tuner. But it's a 4x3 aspect ratio, which is great. Because you could use that for all of your arcade games and it's really hard to find a 4x3 aspect. Oh, I've got, I got our music. A 4x3 aspect uh, TV, LCD TV. And I think that's looking pretty good. Now, sometimes you, what you can do is before you put the front panel on right away, give it, um, just turn that off. Just give it a little, you know, you can do this sort of thing very gently. Just go around, 
make sure everything's settled because sometimes you'll see uh, it could mess up a bit and then that will reveal at least that there's a problem with the internals that you need to go sort, sort out. Kind of a jiggle test. Oh, hello. I jiggled it to death. Oh, I jiggled the power lead out, so it's fine. So I hope that's some uh, use to you. As ever, thank you for watching.